Hey everyone, this is Nick DiRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be doing an introduction to the discounted cash flow evaluation model. This is part of our lecture segment on the cost of capital in the GCF model. So this model, uh, the DCF model, is a way that we can value a stock. And it's certainly not the only approach that can be used for stock valuation. There are a number of other common ones. Um, some of the other common ones are the dividend discount model, which we have briefly touched on, uh, as well as comparable based approaches, which uh, look at similar companies and try to uh, base the valuation off of the valuation of other companies. Uh, but different, uh, valuation models are best applied in different settings, depending on different features of the company. The dividend discount model can be a perfectly valid model, but it should only be applied when the dividends are very stable. They are growing at a fairly constant rate. There's not really a risk of the dividend being cut. Uh, and so this is typically only going to be very mature companies that have a long history of paying dividends and have not deviated from just a kind of constant growth in those dividends. Um, <clears throat> and then the comparable approaches. Uh, the issue there is that it's not going to be very specific to this company. You're always just comparing to other companies that are out there and the approach is only gonna be as good as those comparisons can be. Um, and oftentimes for a company you're valuing, there are not really good comparables available. Um, so the DCF model can be applied to any company and is completely about the particulars of this company not having to look at any other companies and it works just fine for a company that does not pay any dividends or their dividends have been irregular. Um, now it is quite a bit more involved than these other approaches I discussed. Um, and that's why a lot of times these other types of models are still used because they're quite a bit easier to apply but the DCF is kind of the most detailed valuation approach and is going to work for any possible company. And then we're also focusing on this in the course because it's often considered kind of a capstone finance model. Basically, you know, anyone that wants to do financial modeling should know how to build a DCF model. And I've often seen this uh, as part of a job application process that employers will actually request that you prepare a DCF for the interview. Uh, and so it's definitely something that you want to know how to do if you want to work in financial modeling. And it covers a lot of different concepts uh, and brings them all together into one model. And so uh, there's a lot of value in learning it just for trying to work through all the component pieces. So what's involved here in the DCF model? So there's two main sides of this model, the cost of capital and the free cash flow sides of the model. So you can broadly break it down into those two parts. There is a little bit outside of that in determining the enterprise value and stock value, but that's a very small part of the model. Primarily the work involved is in estimating the cost of capital and estimating the future free cash flows. So for the cost of capital, that's the main focus of this lecture series. And then we'll come back in the following lecture series to look at free cash flow estimation. The cost of capital estimation has a few different parts. Uh, we can break that down into the debt and equity side of things. And then uh, within debt and equity, you're going to have to evaluate both the cost or, or rate on uh, the debt or equity, whatever the capital, as well as the market value of it so that we can see uh, the proportion of each in the capital structure, to ultimately come up with a weighted average cost of capital or WAC uh, that represents the entire business. And on the free cash flow side of the model, there we will be 
uh, calculating the historical free cash flows based off the financials. And we'll be projecting the historical financial statements into the future and then calculating the free cash flows off of those projected financial statements. And then uh, all this gets put together to ultimately come up with the enterprise value of the company. So the DCF, uh, as you may have already thought a little bit by the name discounted cash flow, uh, it's all about just taking the present value of future cash flows to determine the value of this company. So, I mean, you'll see that in a lot of financial models that at its core, we're just taking a present value somewhere. Um, but that is a very central concept in finance, so it's not surprising. Um, because we can look at any, any, asset, any asset that pays cash flows, no matter whether it's a stock, it's a bond, it's a derivative, uh, it's a, a, a crypto security token, whatever it is, if it pays cash flows, then we can value it by taking the present value of the future cash flows. Plain and simple, anything that pays cash flows, we can value by that approach. And uh, when thinking about the dividend discount model, there we're saying, well, the dividends are the cash flows to the stockholder. And so if we just take the present value of all the future dividends, then we're going to get the uh, value of the stock. So that's what the dividend discount model is based on. So also on the, just the present value of future cash flows. And so the same thing over here on the DCF model as well. Just with the DCF model, we're looking at the free cash flows of the company, uh, which is representative of the company company's operations and so it's it's uh, made off of the assets debt plus equity and so ultimately we get uh the value of the entire business by doing this discounted cash flow approach and then we back out the equity or stock value based upon that so we're going to be digging in this lecture series into the cost of capital estimation and I just quickly mentioned before uh, that what we're trying to get to is the weighted average cost of capital or the WAC. And within that, we have two components, the cost of equity and the cost of debt. For the purpose of this lecture series, we're going to ignore preferred stock. It is generally a very small proportion of any company's capital structure. And so it's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, but you could apply similar approaches there, just if you value the market value and the cost of uh, preferred stock, then you could work that into this same structure. We're just going to focus on the equity and the debt. So we're going to have to figure out the costs of each of those, um, as well as the market value of each of those to be able to put them together into the WAC. As far as the um, cost of equity, we're going to look at using the capital asset pricing model or CAC, CAPM for that approach. Um, though there are certainly other valid models that we could use. Um, and cost of debt, we'll look at um, a couple different approaches, but the most common approach is to look at interest payments uh, on the balance, on the income statement to determine that. And getting into free cash flow estimation. So there, um, we have to start by looking at the historicals, calculating historical uh, free cash flows. And then we go to project the future cash flows, uh, which is typically done by projecting the financial statements themselves into the future and then calculating the free cash flows from those projected financials. So that's a quick overview of everything that we're going to be doing in the DCF model. And then for the rest of this lecture series, we're going to focus on digging into this WAC um, and how we can estimate the cost and market values of equity and debt and put that together into the WAC. We're also going to look at this 
uh, remaining uh, enterprise and stock value portion of the model and see what we need to do there as well. So thanks for listening and see you next time.